Hey folks, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer, and I'm JR, and this is my fabulous world of toys that I have all lined up here. Um, today I wanted to talk about something that's kind of interesting to me, and it, it touches on my previous video on the uh, uh, RPM Act. Um, so the California, if you don't know what this is, there's a thing called the California Air Research Board or CARB for short. And in the state of California, if you wanna sell a performance part, you have to get a CARB exemption. They call it an EO number. So if you wanna sell, so first of all, all these things here, none of them are exempt in California. That's a 79, that's an 88, and that is also an 88. None of these are exempt. How many miles do they see a year? Maybe 3,000 between the three of them. And yet, they're not exempt because they are gross polluters by the state of California. Um, so I understand why this isn't exempt. It's a 2018. Of course it's not exempt. But why aren't these exempt? My first problem. Second of all, that guy's exempt though. Uh, my second problem with all of this is what is SEMA actually doing for us? So, say my ram here if you want to sell an air filter a cold air kit for a ram which is you know fairly lucrative you can put them together on industrial scales pretty cheap um and you want to sell it for a ram you know 2018 ram 1500 and they all use the same and so mine's an eco diesel but it uses the same air intake system as a 5.7 and probably the same as a 3.6 i would bet um you need eo numbers for each single one so you can't get just an EO, it's the same part, but you need three different tests. And the tests are about $3,000 a piece, and then there's regulatory stuff. If you need a retest, it's not uncommon for it to fail. Now they'll tell you that this stuff's all about clean air and, and all the fur furry little woodland creatures and you know, acid rain and everything else. My question is, why do I need an EO number? They already do tailpipe tests. If anything here passes the tailpipe test, why does it matter if they ask the state of California for permission? I'll tell you why, it's about money. So the state of California can get some money. And I'll tell you what I, I suspect is the reason why they bought into this stuff. Because certain big companies, right? Like say a certain big performance company that starts with an H or a certain big performance company that starts with an E, they have lots and lots of money. They can go ahead and throw six, eight, 10, 50, 60,000 dollars at certifying these because they're gonna charge $580 for an air intake system. Now little old JR, the driveway engineer on eBay, I'm gonna charge like $75. I can't afford that. I think that that's part of what drives it. So the state can cash in, these big companies can cash in and they can shut out all competition. Now I'm rambling, but this brings me to the point of today's video, which is now they've instituted a rule that they're going to check for unapproved ECU tunes in the state of California which you may be saying glad i don't live there i live in arkansas she we don't do none of that well lots of states have adopted carb regulations i know for a fact that new york does they strictly follow it period um and it doesn't it wouldn't surprise me if this went across the board federally so what they're going to do is they're going to go in and they're going to see if like the, the sierra that just drove by right if this guy's got a tune from me that turns his DOD off, he's gonna fail smog. Isn't that great? His displacement on demand that causes his engine to fail, if he wants to turn that off, he fails smog because he paid me $200 for a tune instead of paying that big E company or H company seven or $800 for a tune. Now, what really, really irked me about this is I watched, you know, I read some articles and stuff and I, I kind of blew it off and I didn't really care and then I came to the part where they talked to the SEMA representative. And the SEMA representative said, well, it's a small percentage of vehicles, you know, out of so many tested, there's only a few that fail that are even gonna have a tune, blah, blah, blah. It's probably true. However, that few small percent is the enthusiast that, you know, you think that they're sticking up for. But then I gave it third, further thought and I thought, you know, what is SEMA? Well, they're the Specialty Equipment Manufacturers Association. Who do they represent? The manufacturers of the specialty equipment. 
who feeds them all the money? Probably those big companies that start with an E and an H. Probably not the driveway engineer on Facebook or YouTube, right? Who are they protecting? These laws, all they ever do, all these regulatory laws ever do is they're just protectionism. They're just cronyism. We have a local barbecue place here in town. We have two, they're trailers, right? They're food trucks, essentially. One is an old man who has a trailer. He hauls behind his crappy old Silverado 2500. He's retired, he, he, he builds a fire in his little fire pit and he barbecues and he bullshits with people and he has a good time. That's all he wants to do. He's an old fat guy. He wants to give people food and, and talk to people and, and enjoy his life, right? He doesn't have a permit. He can't afford the permits. There's another company, they pull up with their Denali and their generator and they fire up, I swear to God, their crock pot and throw a bag of bolt GFS shredded pork into there and give you a bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's, it's trash, that's not barbecue. And you know what they do? Every chance they get, when they see the old man set up, they call the, the, the city and they get him run out. He can't set up anywhere in the city limits now. And I would rather shove a rusty railroad spike up my pee hole than ever eat with those people because of what they've done to this old man that he doesn't deserve, frankly. And that's exactly what's happening here. It's lobbyists. It's lobbyists and their money. It's these big companies. SEMA's not protecting you. SEMA's not fighting for you. And you may not live in California and you may not care. And this may not ever touch you in Arkansas or Alabama or some of these other states, but it may. Now, the problem is that I don't know what the answer is, right? I don't know what we need to do as a community, as enthusiasts, right? If you take somebody like PFI Speed who got caught up selling what was it Han data um why can't they sell that and why isn't it if we care about the air if we care about beautiful vistas and air why aren't we just running a tailpipe sniffer because we don't care about the air we care about the money we care about the money for our friends we care about the money for our own government agency we care about the growth that's why they're doing it it's not because they care about clean air if they did they, they'd say if you pass the sniffer you pass the sniffer and that's the end of it so I don't know what needs to happen, but I feel like the community, the car community as a whole needs to come up with something. If there's something out there that I don't know about that's not SEMA, who does not have your best interest at heart, I guarantee it. If there's something out there that is looking out for our interest, I would love to hear about it. So drop me a line in the comment section. I just want you to be aware of this stuff that, you know, it's coming it's coming your way and and it's gonna hit it's gonna knock out all the little guys right all the little guys that we really like to use what are we gonna do when they go after micro square what are we gonna do when they go after you know hp tuners um do you think that they have the resources of those big companies what are we gonna do when the only thing that you can buy to make that thing right there faster is an edelbrock e4 supercharger and a carb approved kit for $8,500 on a $3,500 truck. It's gonna be the end. We're not gonna like it. So I don't know what the answer is. You know, I'd love to change the world, but I don't know what to do. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' comments and thoughts on this though. This is a video I've been meaning to make for a while and uh, I I'm sorry it was a bit rambling, but uh, I hope you enjoy. I hope you like and subscribe. Again, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Let me know what you think. And uh, we'll see you next time on The Driveway Engineer.